After our videos on dental anatomy of permanent mandibular first premolar from the buccal, lingual and occlusal aspect, in this video we will be explaining about the mesial and the distal aspect. Watch the video till the end to understand it well. Hi, we at Denderize welcome you all to a platform where we help you to conceptualize, visualize and memorize dentistry. We know that a permanent mandibular first premolar has two cusps, the buccal cusp and the lingual cusp. Both these cusps are very well visible from the mesial and the distal aspect. Let's start with the mesial aspect first. The first heading under the mesial aspect would be the dimensions. The buccolingual dimension as measured from the greatest curvature buccally and lingually, the dimension comes out to be 7.5 mm. The buccolingual dimension at the cervix is 6.5 mm. The second heading would be the shape of the crown from this aspect. As we can see in the figure, the crown outline is roughly rhomboidal. This shape is fundamental and characteristic of all the mandibular posterior teeth when viewed from the mesial or the distal aspect. Now let's talk about the cusps individually. The third heading under the mesial aspect would be the buccal cusp. In the buccal cusp also let's talk about the tip of the buccal cusp. If we start locating the tip of the buccal cusp then it can have two locations. It can either be centered over the root or it can be little buccal to the center. If the buccal cusp tip is placed little buccal to the center, then this position is the typical placement of buccal cusps on all the mandibular posterior teeth. Now let's talk about the lingual cusp and this would be the fourth heading. The tip of the lingual cusp is placed on a line approximately with the lingual border of the root. Please observe the figure very carefully. If we compare it with that of the maxillary posterior teeth, this is different because in maxillary posterior teeth, both the buccal and the lingual cusp tips are very well within the confines of the root trunks. Please observe the figure very carefully. If we compare the tips of both the cusps from the cervical line, then the distance from the cervical line to the tip of the lingual cusp is two-thirds to the distance from the cervical line to the tip of the buccal cusp. This can be very well seen in the figure. The lingual cusp is shorter in length as compared to that of the buccal cusp. After the cusps, let's talk about the buccal outline of the crown. The buccal outline of the crown from this aspect is prominently curved from the cervical line to the tip of the buccal cusp. Please observe the figure. The crest of curvature is placed near the middle third of the crown. This accentuated convexity and location of crest of contour are characteristic of all the mandibular posterior teeth on the buccal surfaces. Please observe the figure very carefully. If you observe the lingual outline of the crown and the root, then the lingual outline as observed from the tip of the lingual cusp down cervically, it is curved but the convexity is less as compared to that of the buccal surface. The crest of curvature lingually approaches the middle third of the crown. If we move down apically, then the convexity of outline of the lingual lobe or the convexity of outline of the crown is placed lingual to the outline of the root. Please observe the figure very carefully. Because of the difference in the length of the buccal and the lingual cusp when measured from the cervical line, some of the occlusal aspect can also be seen from the mesial aspect. Let's discuss about some key features of the same. As demarcated in green, the mesial contact area can be seen and as demarcated by red, the mesial marginal ridge can also be seen. This mesial marginal ridge has a sharp inclination lingually in the cervical direction as evident in the figure. Along with the mesial marginal ridge, the buccal triangular ridge can also be seen from the mesial aspect. On observing closely, the buccal triangular ridge is parallel to that of the mesial marginal ridge. However, the crest of the buccal triangular ridge is present above the crest of the mesial marginal ridge. Please observe the figure very carefully. If we trace the path of the buccal triangular ridge and the lingual triangular ridge, we would notice that the sulcus formed by the buccal triangular ridge as marked in green and the lingual triangular ridge as marked in blue is directly above the mesolingual groove on the mesial aspect. 
Please observe the figure very carefully. After all the features, the next heading would be the surface of the crown. The surface of the crown from this aspect is smooth except for the mesolingual groove. If you talk about the mesial contact area, then the surface is plately convex and is centered on a line with the tip of the buccal cusp. Below the mesial contact area and above the cervical line, the surface is sharply concave as marked in the figure in red. The next heading would be the cervical line. The cervical line on the mesial surface is regular and curves occlusally. The crest of curvature is centered buccolingually and the average curvature is about 1 mm in extent. If we discuss about the root, talking about the outlines of the root, then buccally and lingually both the outlines taper from the cervical line to end up in a pointed apex. The buccal outline is curved and the lingual outline is relatively straight. If we move the explorer over the surface of the root, then the mesial surface of the root is smooth and flat from the buccal margin to the center depicted in the figure with green. From the center towards the lingual margin, the root converges sharply. Often, there is a deep developmental groove in this area. Occasionally, shallow developmental grooves are also present. So, this was all about the mesial aspect of this tooth. Now, let's start with the distal aspect. The first heading under the distal aspect would be the distal marginal ridge. If we compare the distal marginal ridge with that of the mesial marginal ridge, then firstly, distal marginal ridge is higher above the cervix than that of the mesial marginal ridge. Secondly, it is at right angles to the axis of the crown and the root. However, the mesial marginal ridge has an extreme lingual inclination. Thirdly, the distal marginal ridge is confluent with the lingual cusp ridge. And lastly, no developmental groove is present on the distal marginal ridge. However, mesolingual developmental groove is present on the mesial marginal ridge. The second heading under the distal aspect of permanent mandibular first premolar is the surface of the crown. On moving the explorer over the surface of the crown of this tooth, the surface is smoothly convex. We can say that it has a spheroidal form and has an unbroken curved surface. However, just above the cervical line, a slight concavity is noted that is linear in form and extends buccolingually. On the other hand, on the mesial aspect, the crown is smooth and convex at the mesial contact area. However, a concavity is present above the cervical line and below the mesial contact area. If we compare the distal and the mesial contact areas, then the distal contact area is broader than the mesial contact area. If we particularly locate the distal contact area, then the center of distal contact area is at a point midway between the buccal and the lingual crest and midway between the cervical line and tip of the buccal cusp. Please observe the figure very carefully. If we compare the cervical lines mesially and distally, then distally the cervical line is curved. However, the extent of curvature is less as compared to that present mesially. This is a general rule when one describes all the posterior teeth. On comparing the surface of the roots distally and mesially, the surface of the root distally exhibit more convexity than that found mesially. A shallow developmental depression is centered on the root, but rarely there is a deep developmental groove as that found mesially. Also, the distal surface slopes from the buccal margin towards the center of root lingually, but the slope is more gradual than that found mesially. So, this was all about the dental anatomy of permanent mandibular first premolar from the mesial and the distal aspect. The entire content was discussed under the headings of dimensions, shape of the crown, placement and length of buccal and lingual cusps, the buccal and lingual outlines of the crown and the root mesially and distally, features of the occlusal surface as found mesially such as the buccal triangular ridge, mesial marginal ridge, etc., the cervical line mesially and distally, the surface of the crown and the root mesially and distally. With this video, we have completed the dental anatomy of permanent mandibular first premolar. The links of the buccal lingual aspect and the occlusal aspect are given in the description box below. 
If you like our content, please do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell icon so that you can get notified whenever we upload a new video. Suggestions are always welcome from your side. Stay tuned. Stay safe. Thank you for watching.